It's not every day you see a John Deere green helicopter this up close and personal. When my wife's grandfather was the ag teacher at the local high school back in the early 60s, he was attempting to hook up some lines to a tank that was full of pesticides to go spray a field. One of the fittings failed and literally covered him head to toe in this particular pesticides. Within hours, he was paralyzed. He spent the rest of his life going from paralyzed to severe tremors to many complications associated with being covered with this particular pesticide. My own grandfather developed Parkinson's in the last 10 years of his life, which we also think was a direct result of being exposed to herbicides or pesticides. There's part of me that wonders if we'll ever get away from these antiquated systems associated with petroleum-based pesticides and herbicides. I don't blame the farmers. The farmers work within the parameters that they've been given. And most farmers I know struggle as it is. Back to the well. The first thing we did is we got three loads of one inch gravel to put in the well. Now these three loads end up being about 30 tons of gravel. Now this gravel still has some sediment in it, but for the most part, it's at least that three quarter to one inch range, which is perfect for the well. So we'll now take this rock and fill the void around the concrete cistern, which will allow the water to permeate through the rock as it leaches through the ground and then in turn end up inside that concrete cistern. Because we could not get the dump truck that close to the well and I didn't want to compromise the sides of the well with a load of gravel, we used the backhoe to fill the well with the gravel. Obviously the water got pretty dirty in the process. I pumped it out a couple different times, hopefully washing out as much sediment as I could. I have to figure this is the lowest the water table is going to get. It may in fact get a little higher than that. So I put more gravel in there than I needed, but I'm trying to think about the future and if the water table does get in fact higher. After putting all 30 tons of the rock down in the hole, I waited until the next day before I came back to see where the water table leveled out. And sure enough, when I got up there, the water table was lower than the gravel. I grabbed my rake, spread the rock out as best as I could in preparation for the next step. I picked up a $15 roll of landscaping fabric and put that down first. The idea behind the landscaping fabric is that if the plastic ever gets torn or tears, it's just going to keep the sediment out of the rock. Now most of what I'm going to be backfilling with is very clay based, and I probably could have used that by itself, but I didn't want to take any chances. I'll end up having a couple thousand dollars tied up in this well, so I want to take the steps that I can to try and prevent it from failing early. I put the landscaping fabric down first. I'd throw a few rocks on it here and there to hold it down. Then I grabbed the six mil plastic. I then drilled a hole in the side of the tank, just big enough for the one inch 
poly pipe that I'm using. Now this is not PEX. This is what's called PERT, P-E-R-T. It's different than PEX, it uses different fittings. It's less expensive than PEX and it's great for applications like this. This is very similar to the black poly that's used on a lot of farms and ranches. It's not designed for as much pressure as regular poly, but it's still very easy to use. So before I put down the six mil, I punched a hole in the side of the tank. Now the pump is gonna be connected to this one inch poly. So here's the six mil plastic. Again, I just stretched it out, cut holes where needed, tried to keep it as snug as I could. I went ahead and used some 100% silicone to seal around the poly pipe and then I started digging the trench. Now our frost depth up here is 30 inches. I went a little bit deeper than that, especially right close to where the pipe rolled away from the cistern. As I got further up the hill, I went a little bit less shallow, but I still was in that 40 inch to 36 inch range. I went about 100 feet away from the cistern and I rolled the pipe out. At the end of this 100 foot roll, I left the hole open so I can get to it. Now this is what's called 16-2 low voltage landscaping wire, often used for lighting and things like this. This is direct berry wire, which means I don't have to have conduit around it. Now I'll use this wire to send a signal to the pump through the controls when the tank is full 600 feet up on the hill. This is about a hundred dollar roll of wire. And again, at the end of this 100 foot trench, I left the hole open and backfilled everything else. For the most part, the soil is beautiful. There were some rocks here and there. I tried to shade the pipe and the wire with the softest, cleanest dirt first before I put rocks in around it. That direct berry wire can get damaged if you're not careful, as well as the poly pipe can. So I tried to be aware of this as I backfilled. Again, the backhoe saves the day. Thank goodness I haven't swapped this thing out yet for the excavator. So now I'm taking a lot of the clay that I dug out originally and backfilling around the cistern with this clay. There is some rock in it, obviously, but for the most part, it's got a lot of clay in it and I probably could have used just that clay to seal this. Now I need to clean this up and groom it better and make a mound out of it, but for the most part it's sealed. Okay, I've got uh, most of this backfilled. There's obviously a lot more uh, cleanup that I've got to do as far as leveling this off. And I, again, I want to build a big mound right here. Um, most of this soil that I'm using has a really high clay content. Um, if, if I could have used nothing but this, I, I didn't even really need the landscaping or the plastic. Um, this is this is nothing but pure clay right here uh, But uh, there's a lot of gravel and rock mixed in with it So Monday I'll get back up here and just clean this area up again. I want to mound this up so water will run away from it and uh, And then I'm ready to, to start uh, uh, Running water lines up to the tank. I'm gonna mount the solar panels right here um, And I need to start flushing the, the I need to start flushing the well out I want to get it uh, flushing out. So uh, I've got this clean water coming in. I want to wash the sediment out of the rock as much as I can. But uh, we're getting it. There's not much more I can, I can say. Um, I've got 100 feet of water line ran as well as I've got that 16-2 uh, direct berry um, landscaping wire that I will use for the, um, the signal. To, when the tank's full, it's going to tell the pump down here to shut off. So anyway, making progress. Um, it's almost nine o'clock at night on uh, uh, what our town considers the 24th weekend uh, Pioneer Celebration. So I need to get headed back into town. I think my kids are gonna wanna watch the fireworks and stuff, but uh, we're getting it done. Um, next week I'll, next week we will hopefully get everything finished up. I pick up the, I pick up the, um, the tank next week on Thursday 
Um, and I hope I get my excavator next week. But anyway, we'll see how it goes. But uh, so far, so good.